Welcome to the KLRN Business Report. I'm Tony Casado with the San Antonio Business Journal. There's a company in the U.S. that has become so ubiquitous in our lives that we patronize it to buy almost every type of product, from dog food to diamonds to cloud computing services for business. I'm talking, of course, about Amazon. And while founder and CEO Jeff Bezos has done an incredible job growing an online bookstore into one of the most powerful companies in the world, he's had a lot of help along the way, particularly from U.S. taxpayers in the form of economic incentives. In fact, a journalistic research project published this week by the business journals found that Amazon, created in 1994, has received at least $1.24 billion in taxpayer-funded subsidies and incentives that have fueled the company's growth across the country. This week, the business journals, which includes the San Antonio Business Journal and 42 other print and online business newspapers, published its findings from aggregating and analyzing public records and financial filings over several months. So over the next several minutes, we're going to drill down on that research with a couple of the people in the Business Journal's family who have gone both reporting and overseeing the collection of analysis of reams of data. And we start with Craig Douglas in Charlotte, North Carolina. Craig is the Director of Editorial Data for the Business Journals and the person who oversaw this massive project. Craig, before we get to the major takeaways from the Amazon Effect project, I think it would be helpful for our viewers to kind of understand how it came about and how it was carried out. Could you please elaborate on that? Absolutely. Um, so this started roughly nine months ago um, when we noticed here at uh, the Biz Journal's headquarters in Charlotte, we noticed a consistent pattern among all of our newsrooms, and we've got 40 of them around the country. It was coming in pretty consistently every week that someone was reporting on a major project uh, it was often uh, a project that had a code name, uh, was promising hundreds if not thousands of jobs, big tech company, was building up lots of excitement uh, in the local economic development community, and on and on and on. And within a week, the realization would come to everyone involved that it was Amazon. And this was happening week after week after week in all of our cities around the country. And we, we started to connect some dots and realize that there was a process underway here, that this wasn't just uh, a, a coincidence that one city's project repl uh, represented the same steps and, and looked a lot like the, uh, the same steps that were taken in other cities. And so we decided to do a really deep dive on this. And we knew, because we have 40 newsrooms around the country, because we have the boots on the ground, that we were uniquely equipped to go after this story. Very good. So, okay, let's get to the heart of it. Uh, what are some of the key findings that people really ought to appreciate from the Amazon effect? Yeah, I mean, I think the big number that jumps off the page uh, for everybody that's been involved with this is the fact that Amazon, we've been able to calculate that Amazon's qualified for roughly $1, $1.2 billion in taxpayer subsidies and incentives uh, used to finance this expansion plan that's underway right now, these huge fulfillment centers that are popping up all over the country. And when you take a step back and think about that for a minute, you know, that, that means that the taxpayers have essentially uh, given Amazon a billion dollars in value. Yeah, Craig, if I could uh, just ask you real quick, uh, if you talk about some of the special features that readers can see on this project uh, before we let you go. Uh, we have a great story from Washington, D.C. Uh, on uh, Jeff Bezos, Amazon's founder, and his growing influence in the nation's capital from a lobbying standpoint. You know, he owns the Washington Post, and uh, he's just become one of the most influential people in a very influential city, what its impact has been in terms of job creation, and okay. what its impact has been in terms of disruption and where that might be going. Okay, Craig. While Amazon's footprint stretches across the country, its home base is Seattle, and the Business Journal is fortunate to have in the fold the premier business publication in that city, the Puget Sound Business Journal. So we're happy to go now to Emily Parkhurst, editor of the Puget Sound Business Journal. As one would expect, uh, one of the main articles in uh, this Business Journal's project uh, comes from someone on your team, Casey Coombs. Um, and her piece covers a handful of points, one of which is jobs. Can you talk about what you found with respect to the, the jobs that Amazon brings to communities and the, the, that the company has been given a lot of uh, incentives for? Absolutely. You know, I think um, it's a really interesting question, Tony, and one that's actually really difficult to answer. 
Amazon basically won't say how many jobs it has in its fulfillment centers, even if taxpayers have ponied up to support the development of those facilities. So, you know, often um, Amazon will promise uh, about a thousand or two thousand jobs uh, for for these size facilities. And you know, while that's not a huge number, it can be a game changer for for some of these, uh, you know, these industrial areas that have really been decimated by. Uh, the the financial downturn um, and have been shuttered for years. When Amazon comes in, it can result in in more development in that area. Um, and what's interesting is that the company told us that um, it, it has about 3,600 jobs per county in 44 rural counties, and that that de those developments have resulted in about 100 thousand non-Amazon jobs in those areas. So in, in that way, it has been beneficial. That's interesting. This um, idea of the headquarters to the HQ2, the new Amazon headquarters, after all this has been done, do you have any sense for what it's going to take for a community to land that in terms of incentives? You know, I think the answer might really surprise people. Cities are going to be falling all over themselves to hand out massive incentives. But I tend to think that Amazon already has uh, two or three top cities in mind. Um, and the incentives are just going to be an icing on the cake. This is a talent play. Amazon wants to hire 50,000 people. And it's going to put this facility in the best place to do exactly that. Okay. Well, that's an interesting take. Again, thanks for, for taking some time to be with us today. And have a great day. Thanks for having me. And finally, we take a closer look at Amazon's impact on San Antonio. The reality is that Amazon's impact on the Alamo City area is noticeable, although not in the same way as in many communities. Yes, we have an Amazon Fulfillment Center in Shirts, along with a smaller sorting center and an Amazon Prime Hub in San Antonio, and the Shirts facility did receive roughly $7.6 million in subsidies that included tax abatements. Guadalupe County, the City of Shirts, and the Shirts Economic Development Corp were involved in that. But as I said, San Antonio has a unique view of Amazon as the city's largest tech company. Cloud computing services provider Rackspace has been impacted in a major way by something called Amazon Web Services. So joining me here in the studio is Kristen Mossbrucker, who covers technology at the San Antonio Business Journal. So Kristen, besides helping the Business Journals compile the data on Amazon's physical facilities in our region, you contributed a piece on Rackspace's growing connection to Amazon Web Ser Services, or also known as AWS. So first, can you explain to the viewers what AWS is and how it initially impacted Rackspace when it was launched? Mm -hmm. So AWS is Amazon Web Services, which is uh, essentially the cloud hosting arm of Amazon. So businesses that want to build websites or mobile applications uh, leverage what's called the public cloud or a small slice of um, a computer server inside of a data center to, to really um, allow that website when a lot of users are visiting it um, to, to scale and you know uh, accommodate that, that type of traffic. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that's a product line that they sell. So AWS does this, and Rackspace used to do this. So when AWS launched, how did, how did that affect Rackspace? Yeah, Rackspace had been doing uh, what's called public cloud for years. And, um, you know, it, it used to call, cost them, you know, a couple dollars um, per minute per server for you to rent it. But when Amazon came on the scene, they could get that price down to pennies per minute. Okay. And so they just so totally dominated. Significantly. Right. Okay, so how did Rackspace respond to this? So at, at first, you know, they really tried to duke it out and um, they, you know, hired a, a lot of engineers to, to really build out their own cloud over the years and, and thought that they could, you know, beat Amazon at their own game. But, but because of the price difference, um, you know, they finally said, well, uh, you know, let's partner with this company. And, and that's what they've been so doing. they've been partnering. And how's it working out? So it's actually part of, um, you know, their fastest growing business line, uh, this sort of managed uh, public cloud service. So for now, it's seems to be working out for them and in, in, in adding to the bottom line? Yeah, they, they really made lemonade from lemons, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty rare that, that good, someone can disrupt you and, yeah. and, you know, you still come out the other side with a, yeah, that's a good way, way of putting it. revenue. Well, you did a great job on the piece, and thanks for being with us here. And that's all we have. Thank you for joining us on The Business Report. So long. <laughs>